What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about fructose and fruit. Should you be trying to limit it? Is it something you should be worried about? This comes up because of an Instagram post by Dr. Stephen Lin, who is a dentist. This isn't a what the fitness, this is just inspiration for education because I see this concern a lot. And it's very important to address the concerns around fruit and fructose because I find people really get confused with this stuff. First off, I'm gonna read the Instagram post from him, which is actually, a, I think it's a screenshot of his Twitter. It says, real talk, fruits aren't that healthy. Fructose, the sugar found in fruit, acts like a slow poison in the body, like alcohol. In small doses, your liver can clear it. In excess, the liver spews out fat into the bloodstream, like in alcoholics. What he's talking about is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you eat too much, and he says three pieces, your body swiftly evacuates the fructose, the digestive system, which I'm going to assume out of is missing there. So we're going to say it's evacuates the fructose out of the digestive system. We've all made spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes before, so. And then the last line is fruit should be seen as a dessert. Lots to address there. First, let's talk about fruit and fructose being a small poison. No, anything can be a poison in the right dose, even water. So just blanketly calling something a poison is pretty useless because any, virtually anything can be a poison. That being said, there was a randomized control trial in humans where they gave an extra 150 grams of fructose per day. You would need to drink like six sodas a day. Or, and when it comes to like fruit, you would have to eat an unbelievable amount of fruit to hit that level of fructose. Most fruit sugar is less than half fructose. Some are a little more, it just depends on the fruit. But when you consider something like an apple, like a good sized apple is like 20 grams of carbohydrate. About half of that is fructose. That's 10 grams of fructose. So 150 grams of fructose would be like 15 good sized apples. I mean, I guess maybe there's people out there who eat 15 apples a day or 15 pieces of fruit in a day, but it's probably not that many. And even then in this study, they showed no negative effects from the fructose because overall calories stayed the same. Again, if fructose was really that bad, where is this fat being spewed out from the liver? So the idea that your liver can only clear small doses is incorrect. And this idea that fructose is gonna give you non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, this stems from mechanistic data demonstrating that fructose can increase de novo lipogenesis, which if you start making like large leaps, you could say, well, more de novo lipogenesis in the liver is gonna cause fatty liver, and that's gonna cause fatty liver disease. So it's always important to stop, breathe, and not get really hung up on mechanistic stuff because you can always find a mechanism that will support whatever it is you wanna believe. I did this as a young biochemist. I have a bachelor's in biochemistry and I used to get really hung up on mechanisms. What should matter is the actual question. Does fruit increase liver fat and is fruit putting you at risk for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in humans? <laughs> we should ask, are there studies done on that? And the answer is yes. When we look at fructose and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, what we do see is people who eat higher amounts of fructose have higher incidence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Aha! Dr. Lin was right. Not really. In current Western culture, people who have high fructose intake, it's mostly from high fructose corn syrup, mostly from sugar sweetened beverages. If we look at people who eat fruit, they actually have lower incidence of fatty liver disease. I'll say that again. People who eat higher amounts of fruit have lower incidence of fatty liver disease. Well, how could that be? They're eating fructose. Well, because fruit has all this other stuff in it. One, it has fiber, it has antioxidants. Plus, people don't really tend to overconsume fruit. We've covered this. Fruit actually tends to decrease calorie intake. People who have high intakes of fruit and vegetables tend to eat less total calories. They have less body fat and they have less liver fat because they're consuming less calories and being leaner. This idea that you eat a few pieces of fruit as an otherwise lean person and your liver's gonna start spewing out fat is just completely erroneous and 
simply not true and not supported by the research data. Even going beyond fruit, people said, well, still, okay, fruit's fine because there's fiber and all this other stuff. It's just offsetting the negative effects of fructose. But fructose itself, the molecule, is still bad. In a meta-analysis where they looked at isocaloric substitutions of fructose with other carbohydrate, they saw no changes in the incidence of liver fat. This is a calorie effect. Too much energy is toxic. Too much energy is what causes increases in liver fat. If you are at energy maintenance or in an energy deficit, your body will clear out excess fat. I'm not saying you can't have increased liver fat through other mechanisms than just energy surplus. But people like Dr. Lin, and I don't know specifically if he falls into this category, but a lot of low carbohydrate advocates are also pro-saturated fat. They will say to you that saturated fat is fine and you shouldn't worry about saturated fat and it's not associated with heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. And they make these claims about fructose and liver fat. So there's actually one study that looked at liver fat accumulation from overfeeding fructose versus overfeeding saturated fat. Did you know that overfeeding saturated fat, same calorie amount compared to overfeeding fructose, increased liver fat over 70% more than overfeeding fructose. If we're worried about liver fat and we're worried about fructose, why are we not really worried about saturated fat? Now again, I'm not saying that saturated fat is the worst thing in the world. I think that saturated fat can be a small part of a healthy overall diet, although I think there's a lot of good reasons to try and limit your saturated fat intake. But if you're gonna make a big stink about fructose and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and de novo lipogenesis, you better also make a big stink about saturated fat. Again, at the end of the day, what we should ask ourselves is, what do the human randomized control trials say, or what does the preponderance of the human data say? Not, hey, there's this mechanism that fructose it activates these enzymes and that increases de novo lipogenesis and that means your liver is gonna get fat. No, just look at fructose intake and look at liver fat accumulation, easy. Or look at fruit intake more specifically since that's the claim being made. Look at fruit intake and look at liver fat accumulation specifically. And what do we see? Higher fruit intake actually is associated with people with less liver fat. So fruit is not causing fatty liver. It's not a dessert. Fruit is something that is part of a healthy diet and you should be trying to eat more of, for the most part. Now there's also some people that will say things like, well, fructose can't be stored as muscle glycogen. So really, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who cares about performance, you should be trying to limit fructose because it, it can't replenish muscle glycogen, only liver glycogen. This comes from the fact that your muscle is missing the enzyme to convert fructose into glycogen. It's not a one-step process, it's a multiple-step process, but it's missing a key enzyme. The liver has this enzyme, so it can convert fructose into glycogen in the liver. But again, this fails to take into account a holistic view of physiology. In studies where they look at giving something like sucrose versus glucose for glycogen replenishment, they really don't see a whole lot of difference. A big reason for that is even though fructose can only replenish liver glycogen, your liver can then liberate its own liver glycogen into the bloodstream and that glucose can be picked up by other tissues and used to replenish their own glycogen. So on the whole, it doesn't really seem to make a big difference. I guess maybe if you were only eating fructose as like your one carbohydrate source, maybe then it could be a problem. But again, when you eat even sucrose or even high fructose corn syrup, you're talking about the carbohydrate content being 55% fructose or 60% fructose at absolute most. So again, it's not something you really need to worry about because you're not eating fructose alone in isolation. And especially with regards to fruits, it's not gonna give you fatty liver. Fruit intake is consistently associated with better longevity, lower incidence of non-communicable disease, and definitely not associated with liver fat accumulation. Eat your fruit, don't worry, and don't get nutrition advice from a dentist. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Studies are in the description, as well as our fine nutrition and training products and services that can help you on your journey to your goals. Make sure to click some of them links, buy some of our stuff, and I'll catch you guys next week.